Hello, good afternoon, good morning even, and good evening wherever you are in the world. It's Michael De Groot of StayingAliveUK.com. Welcome to the Social Selling Wednesday Blab. I'm here with Ted. Would you like to quickly introduce yourself, Ted? Sure, I'm Ted Pedromo, author of Ultimate Guide to LinkedIn for Business, Ultimate Guide to Twitter for Business, and I help people set up their marketing funnels and social media campaigns. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you for that. And we're here to talk about anything social selling, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, anything you might like to ask us, feel free to ask away in the Oh, Rachel, great to see you again. Just popping in. Um, what's out on PTO? On, what does that stand for? Vacation day, personal time off. Oh, okay, great um pay time off whoa i've never heard that term before that's good <laughs> that's the best way to be right paid time off yes be that. Uh, so if you have any questions feel free to put them in the chat live chat box we'll uh, certainly look at trying to answer them we usually like to start off and anybody who's viewing us um please join in the first thing that we usually talk about is what have you noticed it's usually to do with LinkedIn but if there are any other things that you've noticed things that have changed uh, that aren't normally announced so we're not talking about stuff that has been announced things that have just kind of popped up and have been amended and changed and we didn't even know it happened uh, but as you're browsing and doing stuff and the reason we pick LinkedIn is because they don't normally announce anything even with their app updates they just say bug fixes and updates that's it you know there's not they're not even trying to engage with us via app updates either so um well i've noticed something that i wasn't aware of but it's already it's been around for a couple of months apparently but i, ha I wasn't aware so but why don't you go first there did you notice anything uh, the big thing I noticed was the birthdays came back under connections. Yay. At they least on Monday. Did. I haven't checked it today. <laughs> wow. But that's and a they, big one for me because I get a lot of engagement by saying happy birthday to people and asking them questions. Great. I didn't even know it, it disappeared. Um, I know. But, so mine was still there when you were reporting on it. So maybe you've got one of these test accounts that they use. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bryn saw it disappear, and then she saw it appear in her inbox. She was getting messages that it was people's birthday, but I never saw that part of it. No, they have the job changes and yeah. the anniversaries in the inbox, in the messages right. inbox now. Not every single one, and it pretty much mirrors what you see on the mobile app on the network. You know, again, you only see a few. You don't see all of them that are appearing on the desktop. So as usual, I'm afraid to say there is inconsistency in terms of process and approach. Uh, birthdays, and I was checking when you were reporting this and Bryn was reporting, I never saw them appear either on the mobile, mobile app or on the desktop. So who knows? So Bryn says they aren't there today for her. <laughs> They aren't in the inbox or they aren't under connections. Hello, Bryn. Bryn. Welcome. Oh, sorry. She's just I'm sending not messages. Paying attention. I'm not paying attention. She just clicked in. Hey, guys. Hey. I is. only have a few minutes because Bob Woods is here in the house and we're training him today. And so that is why he is not on the call as much as he misses you guys. He needs a um, lot of training. He needs a lot. He has a <laughs> lot of training. <laughs> Uh, he's got a long day ahead of him, Bob. Oh, he already had a long day yesterday, and a long day today, and a long day tomorrow. We're looking forward to the new Bob next week. We certainly are. The new, the new, and, and exhausted Bob. The new is the house new. broken? <laughs> yeah, he is. He's so, he's just as wonderful in person as he is on Blab. So. Awesome. Yeah, wow. we've had a we had a really good time. We we went out and my husband came into the city and we took him out for oysters last oysters. night. Oysters. Oh my god, yeah. It was a good night. <laughs> so and he saw the Liberty Bell, which he had never seen before. So that was Oh wow. Fun. 
So just, I mean, I just popped in because as frustrating as the changes are, that change in my inbox when I went in there today, because we announced to all of the link, the people links clients about this new inbox change and it's not there. What, the so, birthdays or? Anything? None of that, that whole like, I think people must have complained. And the whole, that whole like the blue, you know, birthdays, anniversaries, all that stuff is gone out of the outbox. So I see it under connections now, anniversaries and birthdays today. Okay, so if we go back to my network connections. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know that that went away. I think birthdays went away for a moment. About two um, weeks for me, they had disappeared and then they came back. Yeah, all the happy birthdays. Now, I I actually liked it in the inbox. Some people hated it. I wish we could like check we want it or we don't want it. That would have been nice. But don't tease me like that. That's yeah, it, I think it was good. So whenever you went into your messages, you got a, a few up there. You know, they weren't all of them. Right. But you got about three or four. That was it. Uh, Is yours still there? No, God, it's not appear. I just went to it and it's not appearing. So yeah. I guess they must the My trouble problem. was though, no, Bryn, it wasn't consistent, right? So there were, because imagine they were appearing in three places on the home page, top right, mm -hmm. on messages, and mm -hmm. then also on network. And, mm -hmm. you know, which one did you do? Which one didn't you? I know they're supposed to refresh and things. But there doesn't seem to be a consistency to say they're always going to be there and that's where you do that job. Mm -hmm. you know, it's like there are three places where you can do this job. <laughs> yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yep. Um, and I don't think they synced. So if you liked something and it happened to randomly come up somewhere else, you'd probably be liking it a second Yeah. Time. Yeah. That's a real shame. So, so Rachel said she connected her calendar to LinkedIn. It's prompting her to connect with colleagues that she has meetings with that day. Yeah, yeah. I, I did that a long time ago. I love it. I we think know about great. that. Thank you, Rachel. I'm glad you're enjoying that. We, we've known that for a while and uh, it works really well. It works. So really I'll tell well. you where it doesn't work. Go on. And then I'm going to pop off. Yeah. So we're not that it doesn't work. It works differently. So at people links, I can click on other people's calendars to see where they are. And if that stays clicked, like I'm looking at Kevin's calendar or Bob's calendar or someone else's calendar, and that stays clicked, LinkedIn actually is looking at their calendar. So I would get updates. You're meeting with Sharon Smith tomorrow. I'm like, who is Sharon Smith? And I'd realize that was like Kevin's meeting. Uh. Wow. So it was weird just because it was on my calendar. It was reading it like it doesn't seem to be going into the API and pulling it out. It seems to be looking at it. I'm not sure. I don't know how that stuff works, but that was weird. So I have to make sure I uncheck their calendars. Otherwise, that it sends me your meeting with someone that I'm not. So I, I my understanding because I spoke to another Rachel, Rachel Kumar at LinkedIn She's for great. several weeks about this. And initially she said it was only going to be, I think we talked about this, non-first level connections. And I convinced her it needed to be first level connections as of well. Yeah. And, uh, but it was, it's only supposed to sync from your mobile phone, your calendar from your mobile phone to LinkedIn. So, oh, so, that, so when I click on Kevin's, on my laptop, if I click on Kevin's email, uh, email calendar, it actually shows on my mobile phone. Ah, right, okay. So I have to unclick it on my, I'm sure I can do it inside my, my mobile phone. I oh, so it when, it, when it appears on your mobile phone, LinkedIn's finding those appointments and right. them into the app. Oh, I got it. Okay. Anyway, that. you know, it's all the, it's all the, the you know, we, we're as a team really good at breaking LinkedIn and figuring out all, like, <laughs> yeah, that one's not working so well, but. Um, but I wanted to throw that out and I have to get ready. I'm getting on a call with Kurt Shaver because we are doing a webinar at noon, which anyone's really, if you're interested, go to peoplelinks.com slash webinars. Thanks for letting me promote that. It's totally free and awesome. Tell Kurt Bye. I said hello. He lives by me. We're good friends. Ah, he's awesome. I, I met him when I was out in San Francisco. You were busy having dinner with your friends, right? So Ted's meeting. Yeah. 
<laughs> cooking. My for wife, my wife. <laughs> you are, I blame it all on her. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I got to spend some time with him and he's fabulous. I, you know what? The social selling people like in the world in general, I think we're just an amazing community of people. It's just awesome. It's so much fun. So enough. And, and Wayne is on the call, who is one of those community members. And if you can get him to jump on when I jump off, he's freaking awesome. So guys, have a wonderful day. Thanks for jumping Thanks. in. Thank you. Good to see you, Brent. Bye. Okay, I just shared that link to People Link's webinar. So in there, I'll share it in the text box as well. Yeah, you can click on that and it'll pop up. Great. So where were we? Um, yeah. So birthdays back from being gone. That's good because it's important that people have their birthdays, right? <laughs> See, my big problem with things going in the inbox, my inbox is so full because it has all the sent messages too. Yeah. So all the invitations I send, all the welcome messages, I get about 10 to 20 new connections a day and I send a welcome message to every one of them. That's right. So I've missed a couple opportunities in the last couple of weeks because my inbox has so many things and I couldn't scroll past a certain point. No, so the, the inbox is not that great for if you have a lot of messages back and forth is losing others that are way, way down. Yeah. And that's a real shame. And yeah, it's nothing we can is do. Is it better on a mobile device? I haven't tried it on my mobile recently. It, messages. It looks pretty much the same, but you can scroll. I felt you could scroll through quite a way down because I had the same problem a few weeks back. Yeah, um, I think they fixed that problem because the okay. other day I could scroll pretty far. Yeah. Wayne says he can't stand the sent messages showing up clogging my inbox. I totally agree with you. Yeah, good <laughs> I point. wish we just sort like we used to. Here's my sent messages. Here's my received. Yeah. Well, there were different boxes, weren't there as well? Yeah. And I mean, the only thing is to make sure that they're unread. You can sort on unread messages. Yeah. Uh, so that's something. So at least for ones that you might have missed, if you press on unread or sort on unread or filter on unread, you can you can see those. Yeah, they're trying to make it more like your phone where you're chatting or texting back and forth with people, that kind of conversation. Yeah. Instead of an inbox. Yeah. Okay, so that's your what you noticed. So I noticed that on the pulse post that if you or any of your Connections has published a post within LinkedIn. I, I don't know what they call it anymore. I get so confused about it. Post but an article or whatever. Article or whatever. What do they say on the homepage? They say publish a post. And it says differently for some people. Some people it says um, write an article or something. Yeah, but publish a post. So on the post, that somebody might have published, you are able to highlight a bit of text inside that post, blog post, and then beside it, an arrow appears. And you can immediately share that to LinkedIn or Twitter. So when you press the LinkedIn, let's say it's one of your connections. I did this for Bryn yesterday. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> This was Bryn's post. I highlighted a bit of text because I wanted to give that as the text rather than the title to draw people in to go and read it. It puts that bit of text in quotes, as, it, as you would hope and expect. But it also says via Bryn Tillman and tags her name Ooh. in the LinkedIn text box, the sharing box inside LinkedIn. Nice. And that's really cool. If you do the same to Twitter, it will go, it will say via or, you know, and puts Bryn's Twitter handle in. And of course, the LinkedIn handle as well. And it puts the URL for LinkedIn there too. Mm -hmm. And it is better than sharing it to native. So I use Buffer. So when I share a LinkedIn post, Pulse post via Buffer, it doesn't pull in the image. And Buffer know this, and they have queried this before. 
something to do with the way that LinkedIn uses their, their platform. But so the only way to get an image to appear with that text is to download the image from the post and upload it to say your sharing platform. Uh-huh. Uh, but that's long winded and it takes time. So to do the sharing within LinkedIn to LinkedIn and Twitter, so you can't schedule it for particular times, but it allows the, they will pull in because you're doing it inside LinkedIn and it does pull in the image as part of the article. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I thought that was pretty neat and easy to do. So that's what I noticed this week. <laughs> that's pretty cool. I'll have to try that. Yeah, test it out. Test it out. I just looked at my LinkedIn and I have write an article, not publish a post. <laughs> yeah, it's different. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> It is different. Well, your English is different than ours. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> it's mad. Write I an article. What are they different. thinking? Oh, my gosh. Let's well, make it different know. for different English-speaking nations. <laughs> right. Despite all these changes, I have to say LinkedIn still works. It's frustrating, but we, we're, we're Just determined, about. aren't we? Just about. Yeah, we're making it work, I think, more to the point. Yeah, it's because it's such a powerful database and we're saying, no, we're going to make this work. We're connected with so many great people. It's yeah. just keeping in touch with them, really. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. OK, there's a question from Rachel. Uh, do you find that you get more engaged when you post a link with metadata image or actually upload an image? In, well, I there, there is actually some argument to I'm, I'm, and I'm, I'm not sure what you mean with metadata image that's too technical for me but what i've noticed inside linkedin if you say share a url when you're posting on your newsfeed what's that called <laughs> you know uh share something when you share a link something and you put the url in there it automatically will grab the image and the article description, whatever. Yeah. It actually is better to get rid of that little preview and upload the image in its own right because it will fill the frame of the newsfeed in its entirety and keep the text inside the actual post window. Yeah. Yeah. That is a better way of doing it because the image is bigger and people can go, oh, right, it's more noticeable that way, although it is time consuming and it's a shame that it doesn't show up nice and large, but it's kind of in people's faces so they can't, you know, ignore it. It's a bit like the influencer videos. They are, you know, fill the whole frame that kind of up there in your face. You can't, you know, the temptation's there to click on it. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, That's great. That's the downside of I use Sendable and Hootsuite to post content. And yeah. You don't get the whole big image. They do. No, you don't. You have you to don't. actually you get that little square. It pulls it, the metadata over. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's, um, I haven't used Sprout, but I've, I, I must have in my years of evaluating different stuff have evaluated it to uh, Rachel. So um, it'd be good to have a look at that again. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. So then um, I've got a few things that I shared in chat. It's now way at the top, but I wanted to have a little chat about groups um, if possible. I'm, I'm doing an infographic at the moment that is preparing Facebook groups versus LinkedIn groups. However, today I also joined a group that I was invited to join or I was suggested that I perhaps I would like to check it out. And it was a WhatsApp group, right? Mm -hmm. So have you ever experienced a WhatsApp group? No. No. I haven't gone there yet. <laughs> okay, don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out Snapchat. <laughs> don't even bother going there either. 
We'll come on to that in a minute. So, um, right, Slack, right? So that's another fun community group. In fact, yeah, we have a community group on Slack, which I have to say I'm very bad at sharing when we're here. So I'll need to go and check it out, um, how, we, how we share it. But um, so we, there are so many different groups now popping up all over the place. I mean, we're pretty well convinced that LinkedIn groups are dead. Well, they're not dead and they don't exist anymore, but people are not very engaged there. They're not engaging in conversations. Yeah. So any other groups, Ted, that you've been in or used? Uh, I tell you, Facebook is really the most engaging groups I'm in, no matter what the topic. You know, they say it's just for fun, but there's a lot of good business conversations going on on Facebook. That's right. That's right. So this with the other ones, I'm just so distracted with all the other potential things out there. Yeah, you got to really focus on one or two. Correct, because we only have so many minutes in the day. And so I stayed in this WhatsApp group for like three hours maximum. And all that people were doing there is posting adverts about their business. Hmm. Hey, do you need a website or are you bored with your website? Contact me. Da -da -da. Oh, do you want SEO? You know, uh, do you need telephone lines or, you know, ADSL, broadband? You know, contact me. And I went, seriously? These are conversations? Goodbye. So I went, I got out straight away because not only that, everybody's phone number is visible that you don't you know you see a little bit of their name but mainly it's a phone number that you're having a conversation with so yeah. you don't really know who that person is it's you, there's like a desktop app you you can't really respond to that message properly you can't tag people it's a mess i just went i'm out <laughs> yeah i've tried it i'm out i'm out of here so that one has the big thumbs down from me Facebook wins on so many different levels, especially now, and check this out, especially as inside the groups, you can do Facebook Live video, yeah. right? Yep. So I've just done a test today before we came on air, and did you get an invite to join the Social Sales GPS group? Yeah. Right, are you in that? Yeah. So I posted a Facebook Live video and I asked the questions about I asked the question about groups, so I'm I'd like us to practice how to do the question and answer session that influencers are doing inside Facebook groups. So if we can get lots of folks coming to our group, we can be posting Facebook Live videos and getting the responses from people. So we could do a look-alike inside Facebook groups. And, and you would say, why haven't they done that inside LinkedIn? Right. Because we could be asking questions of people and they could be answering them using video inside LinkedIn. And how awesome would that be? Right. But Facebook are leading the way. Well, maybe Microsoft will integrate some Skype features so they can get some video in somehow. Or... Maybe. Maybe. If, yeah. Wayne yeah. just shared an article he wrote about LinkedIn groups, hit or miss. Thanks, Wayne. I'll check that out. Which, which, oh, cool. They're hidden benefits still. Yeah. Yeah, I, some people say they swear by groups still. I'm like, okay, they're doing something. I guess it's not well, sure. There are some benefits, no doubt about it. However, if you can strike up a conversation, then you're doing really well because I've tried and I've not succeeded and I've not posted any links at all. So my conversation or question was just floating and nobody was answering it. In the end, about two weeks later, somebody started to. So presumably they got an email with it on and then responded to it potentially. Yeah. I've done that in the past. I'll look in a group that used to be good or something. And I'll just say, hey, look, there was like 200 posts today, but not one is a conversation. Let's have a conversation. People will jump in a lot of times. Yeah. 
but sometimes it blind, they're so blinded by all the other stuff, they don't see it. Sure, sure. I agree. I agree. Okay, they okay. Wayne saying they announced last week that video is now available for influence only. So I'm pretty sure it's coming to all of us. Yeah, let's hope it does. And we got the same with Pulse posts. Influencers started that journey, and everyone got it eventually. So we're keeping our fingers crossed here that we're all going to get it, Wayne. So yeah, I'm with you on that one. But what I wanted us to do here at Social Selling Wednesday, plus some other colleagues, and hopefully other people that will join us, is start the process off and practice how to do this in advance inside Facebook. Because you can do the same thing inside Facebook yeah. groups. So why not have a go at that? So anyway, that's the idea. And uh, anybody who's listening or watching this, you know, go and try it out. Do the same thing as the influencer doing, but on Facebook, either in your personal or in your groups or on your, I don't think you can do it on, oh, you can do it on pages, I'm sure, too. Yeah. Um, okay, so that was that, groups. And then the other topic, of course, of the week has to be, you mentioned it, Snapchat versus Instagram stories. So have you checked Instagram stories out yet, Ted? No, I just started playing around with Instagram recently. And it's powerful. When I post things, I get a lot of response, a lot of engagement. Yeah. Yeah. But I haven't done Snapchat anything. I haven't done the stories much. Actually, I've seen brands do stories in Snapchat. Okay, it's pretty, well. pretty good. Snapchat, I checked it out from all the way through, but I find the functionality of it, it is for younger people. I think, you know, it just, it's just so, you've just got to swipe all over the place and you actually forget which way you're swiping in the end. Oh, it's, it's for the millennials. I see my kids, they're just like, doot, 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 doot. the swiping. So I have not got stuck in with Snapchat. And however, I've been on Instagram for a while. Not, I'm not, I haven't got a big following. I'm not following. I'm not certainly not active every day. Um, however, the stories that they've created have got a very similar Snapchat look and feel to it. Mm -hmm. And in fact, some of it is exactly the same. Yeah. So whether they're going to be suing Snap, whether Snapchat are going to sue Facebook over their copy <laughs> who knows but or whether it's some sort of relationship but i can see that apart from see a lot of the younger teens and millennials the way they use it they may not share stuff but they're chatting they're yeah. using these platforms to do secret chatting and sharing photographs privately that none of us will see yeah and of course we want to get our messages out and be seen. So it's slightly different. It's, so I yeah, think it's not our platform. <laughs> no. Um, so, okay. So Wayne is saying some things. You're using Facebook Live. Great. Periscope. Practicing. Excellent. Snapchat should have taken the three billion from Facebook a few years ago. Certainly they should have done. Larger on Instagram, after I started into Facebook, they might be in trouble. I agree yeah. wholeheartedly with you, Wayne. I totally agree that Facebook are doing a better job all around. They they have stolen stuff from Snapchat, and I'm I think Snapchat are slowly going to disappear as a result of it. You know why? You know even people like Carlos Gill, or is it Jill? I don't know how you pronounce this. I, I, I would call him Gil, but even Carlos Gil, if you watch any of his videos, I haven't actually watched it, but he's been sharing how to transfer your videos from Snapchat to Instagram. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, so how to get them on Instagram. So you kind of go, what, seriously? So people are already looking how they can morph across because I don't think they're getting the audience on Instagram. And there's only a limited amount of people that can have stories on Instagram. Well, 
unless you're connected to them. Right. Oh, sorry, on Snapchat. Whereas on Instagram, I have to say they've done a really good job and the layout and the the way you interact with it is super easy. There is still a, quite a bit of swiping now. But... I'm not going to look at it for a couple months because I'll just get distracted. And <laughs> I think that is wise. And I'll tell you why that's wise, because it's bound to change again. Yeah, you know, because what are these guys doing? They put stuff out and say, "Let's see what problems we have," or "Let's see what everybody feels," and then we're going to slowly put all these changes in place. So, yeah. I think that's a sensible approach. Leave it for a few months, and you know, let, let's get the summer out of the way. There'll be ten new uh, things in a couple of months. <laughs> ten new things, yeah. I read an interesting article a couple of weeks ago about television viewing and social media like this how like television shows used to get certain million viewers every month or every day yeah. every time every episode and that's yeah. down like 50 percent at least because people are there's so many options for them to watch now all this on-demand stuff there's like 20 or 30 different networks now yeah so their attention span and they're not focused as long and same thing with social media. Some people are on Facebook, some on Snapchat, some on Instagram. So our focus, it's really hard to stay focused on one thing and find, you have to find your audience in the right place and just engage with them. You're so right. And have you seen, perhaps, I'm going to share a link to a video that I re-watched yesterday um, by a great it's an American agency, you know, uh, creative agency, who create just the best animations. And it's called, let me just get the link. It's called, what's the internet, what the internet is doing to our brains. Um, and it shows you, there it is. It shows you a great way how all of these messages and things that we're being distracted by are just, it's just, we don't remember anything right. anymore, right? Because I call it going down the rabbit hole. You know, you start somewhere and you've ended up somewhere else and you have no idea how you landed there, how you got to it. You don't even remember so I might say, oh, I found this great thing, but I don't know where it is anymore because I can't remember. I just got there via this click and that click and, you know, somebody's post and a video and a... it's impossible to keep track of. Even if you bookmark it, you have so many bookmarks now. It's like, which one is that? <laughs> I, I, I don't know where to put stuff anymore. I go, do I add it to my reading list? Because I use Safari, so it's on all my devices. Or do I bookmark it? Which which one do I do? It's like, ah. Uh, and I never go back to the reading list, so it's pointless anyway. And if it goes into a bookmark, it's gone because you don't know where it's gone. Right. Yep. I, <laughs> it's crazy. We're just so much information coming at us now. You're right. We don't remember half the stuff. Like last week. What were we talking about last week on the show? <laughs> Well, I know we were talking about the influence of videos. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. That was one of them. Because I was trying to be mindful not to, um, not, not to, hold on. Uh, Rachel mentioned something I missed. Okay. Yeah, the infographic when it comes out. Yeah, I will definitely, it's a fun one. Um, I will definitely share that with you. So one thing I started with uh, on the first of this month, Perry Marshall had a little program. And I signed up. We have, I'd pay $97 for it because I'm one of his members. But he, right. he sends us a message every day. And basically, we have to start every day with at least one hour of quiet time and meditating or oh, reading. Yeah. And no social media all day long from 9 to 5. You did mention that last week. I'll tell you. But it's it's good. been 10 days now. That's right. We wanted to know every week what the update is. I have to go on LinkedIn, you know, throughout the day a few times, but I don't, it's not like Facebook. I'd go on Facebook 
and I would get sucked into these conversations where I'd start reading articles and like you said, click here, click there, click there. And all of a sudden, hours gone. It's like, you know, if I timed it, I probably spent three hours a day on Facebook wasting time reading stupid video, watching videos or reading stupid articles. I'll tell you, I'm getting so much more done in these 10 days by just being really disciplined and starting the day not reading the newspaper and watching the news. Just really journaling what I'm grateful for. He gives us like three or four things. The question of the day, you know, what comes up while you're meditating or just having quiet time or praying, whatever you want to do. Yeah, yeah. It's been amazing. I've gotten more done in 10 days than I have in probably the last three months. Awesome. That is fantastic. But it's well kind of done, a balancing dude. act, though, because we make our life on social media. <laughs> You know, um, my wife and I are going away in a week and a half, and we're, we're literally going to unplug from the digital world. It's going to be one week of a digital detox. Nice. And in fact, the place where we're going, you're not allowed to have your mobile device in the different places. You can have it in your room, but we're not going to spend time in our room all the time but you cannot have your mobile phone there. So we are forced to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're consciously saying we're going to have a digital detox and unplug, you know, from the digital world for a, a week and see how we feel at the end of it. You're going to be shaken the first few days. <laughs> <laughs> like the withdrawal symptoms, I'm, foaming at the mouth. <laughs> I'm going to a place this weekend. It's up in the Sierra foothills. And they don't have internet at this place we stay. They don't have cell phone service. It's totally unplugged from the world for like for three days. We can't do it. There's like literally it isn't there. So we can't reach for our phone. But like the first few days, you're like pulling out your phone, trying to look at email or trying to look at something and it's it doesn't work. It can wait. Exactly. It can wait, right? There is nothing as important unless there is an emergency in the family. That's the only thing why you might wish to be contacted but there's nothing else that is important enough they have an old phone there the old rotary dial phones and it's funny because wow. the kids see it and they don't know how to use it <laughs> <laughs> where's the screen <laughs> right where do i push the buttons <laughs> where's the speed dial oh i love it yeah so yeah, I think we need well, to do that every once in a while. Just totally unplug and just step away from this. But I, I think a lot of people are going to do that more and more. I think as as it becomes so overwhelming, there has to be an element where people are kind of pushing back. So when I joined this WhatsApp group for a few hours today, I was so conscious because I asked the question on the Facebook group where they posted it. Why would I want to join this group? Why aren't we having the conversation right here? Right. Why are you sending people from within your face group, Facebook group to your WhatsApp group? Why are you doing that? You're dividing the attention. Yeah. You're you're splitting the engagement. You know, there's a, because all you're doing is telling people FOMO, fear of missing out. You're missing out on another conversation taking place over there yeah. i know you're here but we're having fun over there so join us over there so i went okay i had a bit of why am i missing out on feeling let me go and check it out but then the the experience was so poor and what they were posting was so dreadful i went i've seen enough yeah i'm out <laughs> and i left it straight away there's just no point. So, and I think more, peop more people will do that and we'll start to kind of move towards a, a couple of platforms and go, that's enough. You know, two or three, that's enough. I don't need to be everywhere. Right. Last night I did, I do a monthly meetup group here locally and Alex Mondosian does it with me now. Yeah. We've done two together. Last night our topic was engagement. Mm. How do we engage? And he had a thing where we all, we're all a verb. He has this whole theory that we all are, have a verb that describes us. And he has a whole process he takes people through. So you kind of figure out what your verb is. 
And then I took it and was like, okay, what if we applied this verb to your LinkedIn profile? Like, how do we engage people? Because my verb is really, I had a couple of different ones, but everybody has more than one, but there's one primary. And mine is to serve people because I'm always helping people. I'm always serving. So I kind of put that in my LinkedIn thinking that from my perspective. And we went through the room and everybody told us their verb and we came up with a new professional headline and they loved it. Great. They talked about, they said, I resonate with these people. This is what I like to do. I'd love to do. And it'll attract the people that you know, resonate with that. Cool. So we kind of like two hour discussion of how to engage people and stay engaged in this world. It was great because everybody was, we were like 30 people there. Everybody was just so excited. They like walked out of there on cloud nine, <laughs> totally engaged. Excellent. We totally engaged them for two hours. Excellent. So that's, and it's this, it's our challenge. How do we keep people engaged? Um, LinkedIn, the, the, there's an artist called Hugh McLeod. He's Scottish and he lives in Florida now, Miami. And his handle is gaping void so check him out on twitter if you're listening watching and i get a daily email and he's a he's a he's a brilliant and amazing artist and he draws a new drawing every day or probably he has an archive of drawings and it's always a key message around i don't know people businesses organizations it's, it's about how you get the most out of people in organizations Anyway, they LinkedIn partnered with the, with him, and they did an ebook. And the cover on it. So I'm taking each illustration. It's about 34. I'm going to do a little blog post on each one. And but the first one I did was attention is a currency, right? So that's on the cover. We earn it, we spend it, and sometimes we lose it. Why now is the time? to invest in digital experiences that matter. So not talking necessarily about, you know, dollars or pounds to buy that attention, which of course a lot of people are doing through advertising uh, and other means, but it's also about how you invest with your content, with your conversation, with your thoughts about what are you going to be saying? What are you going to be sharing? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, we are all looking for eyeballs and attention towards ourselves for the product or service that we're providing. Yep. So it's, and so you're right. It's how, how can you come across digitally, virtually in a way that will grab people's attention? Because there are so many people trying to get all of our attention at the moment. Yeah. I think that kind of makes it important that maybe we focus on certain segments because I notice most of my clients are over 40 to 45 years old and older. I have very few people in the millennial age. You know, they don't care about LinkedIn. No. They don't care about what we're teaching. Yeah. They socialize a whole different way than we do. So it's best for us to probably focus on for the over 40 crowd with what our message is. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Because they can relate to this, what we're talking about. We're like overwhelmed with <laughs> electronics. And I think Steve Jobs is in heaven laughing at us. He has that iPhone. We're so addicted to our phones now. Every sleep, people sleep with their phones. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> they track their sleep patterns with their phones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. It, we are addicted to them. Yeah. We are. We are addicted to them. And in fact, I was watching on uh, Netflix, they have this um, series, I hadn't noticed it before, called Genius or something. And they have different episodes about different people versus different people. And it was Jobs versus Gates. And they chronicled the, in, a sh- in an hour the story of how they met each other and you know how the battle started between the two. Well, they originally, you know, Jobs wanted to kind of build more of a partnership than Gates, but Gates then stole the idea and then, you know, Jobs stole the idea from Xerox and 
the the rest is history. Yeah, they both but, stole uh, from Xerox. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, because they did all the development of the Windows at the end of the day. Yeah. They uh, that was their invention, Windows. Yeah. Uh, what we're using now is a Xerox idea. Right. Um, they did it and we've never got anything different right it's always been a window type environment mm -hmm. so I, i've lost my track in what i was trying to say but it's we so these guys created these devices that the whole world billions of people are using and are addicted to and you know believe it's the only way that things can be done yeah. now well, they say the alerts on our phones when they pop up it stimulates the part of the brain that cocaine stimulates so that's why we're so addicted to it dopamine yeah so i wrote an article a few years back that went into the and not a significant journal but somebody's small journal about psychology and they asked me to write an article and it's called do social networks sell drugs and the answer is they do yeah they know exactly how to stimulate those parts of our brain. Yeah. So I always have this saying, when people like, comment, retweet, share your stuff, guess what happens in people's brain? They go, oh, they love me. Oh, yes. Look, <laughs> they've liked my post, they love me. So the latest form of bullying between teenagers is not liking commenting on people's posts so when you post your selfie on Instagram or Facebook or snapchat or wherever if you want to bully that person you don't engage with it I mean how sad is that yeah but it's come to that now but because everybody is desperate to say oh oh they've commented on my post oh, so I want to do more of it. I want to share more. I want to, because it makes me feel good about myself. Yeah. yeah. So instead, do what you're doing in terms of switching off from social media. Look what you've already got in your life. Be grateful for that. Be grateful for the people in your life. Be grateful for what your experiences are in life, what you're learning, what you appreciate and love that's a better experience to have pick up the phone once in a while and call somebody and talk to them yeah that is a great way to reconnect with former clients i've been doing that recently just picking up phone talking to people mm. and it turns into conversations and like wow somebody actually called me and talked to me for more than two seconds and they didn't try that's to sell it. me anything that's it yeah it's crazy very good, Ted. So anything else that we've missed, anything on your mind that you wanted to share with everybody? No, really, the digital detox, you're going to enjoy it. First few days will be tough, but... <laughs> <laughs> you're doing it every day already for the last 10 days. Well, I'm still on the computer most of the day, but I'm just not jumping over to Facebook and Twitter and interacting with people as much. Great. So That's awesome. That's awesome. You rock. That's brilliant news. Okay, well, let's end it here then. It's Michael De Groot and Ted Prodromo from socialsellingwednesday.com. We're here every week at a Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. UK time, 5 p.m. Central European time. <laughs> and we look forward to seeing you each and every week. Come and join us. Have a chat about social selling and we'll see you again take care and bye bye thanks for joining us wayne and rachel and, and everybody else <laughs>